a beautiful sight. We're back in Nashville. Nashville Super Speedway for the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. Rackley Roofing 200 qualifying. We're going to go racing later tonight, but we've got to set the field, and we'll do that pronto. There will be some good ones that don't make the show today. 36 will start. And we're about ready for single truck qualifying coming up. We did have one practice earlier this afternoon. Actually, it was 12 noon. And Chandler Smith from Kyle Busch Motorsports was quickest. Hey, William Byron back running in the Camping World Truck Series for the first time since 2016. And you see the rest of the top 10. One name missing from that top 10, John Hunter Nemechek, series points leader. But he did not do a qualifying run, a mock qualifying run, as many did. But still, we anticipate the four of John Hunter Nemechek will be quick today in qualifying. Let's go downstairs, get some quick stories before we get rolling, and we'll begin with Jamie Howe. Jamie? Well, Vince, there's a story that's still developing back in the garage area. So the number 38 of Todd Gilliland will not make it out for qualifying. There's no official word yet, but basically NASCAR was not happy with an adjustment that was made to the nose of the car. So the team has been thrashing for the last hour and hour 15 minutes to try and get it up to an approved state to be able to make it for the race tonight. Now, Todd was running as high as 11th this morning, um, in, or he was actually leading for a while in practice. He finished it in the 11th spot, and he was encouraged by that. They're going to miss this session so we're going to see what happens but they're not the only one who has an issue with the front of the car the other one is the number 15 of tanner gray he's also still back in the garage with his team thrashing to get out there for the race later on tonight but we'll keep an eye on this there's still some things to unfold jamie little well, Jamie, one team that got through unscathed, Chandler Smith in the 18 for Kyle Busch Motorsports. They are on a roll coming off their first ever back-to-back -to -back top 10 finishes of this season, I should say. And then he jumped to the top of the board and was fastest in that only practice session. Chandler was so jacked up afterwards. He said he loves this place and that only session he's ever had at this track. He said it races like a short track, but it has the speed of a mile and a half track. So right now, Chandler's sitting back and watching as qualifying begins he waits until number 31 to roll out keep your eye on the 18 vince we'll do it jamie and thank you jamie squared down on pit road and in the garage area qualifying when we return back at nashville super speedway in the camping world truck series qualifying for tonight's rackley roofing 200 42 trucks on the entry list. Only 36 will make the show. And as Jamie Howe told us already, the 38 of Todd Gilliland and the 15 of Tanner Gray uh, not making it through tech and will not be qualifying. They'll get in on provisionals, but that certainly makes it a little tighter as you try to make this field. Dawson Cram, the first to go out for qualifying, the 19-year-old from Mooresville, North Carolina. That only leaves three open spots yep. for provisionals, Vince. Yes, it When does. you know that two of those trucks that are fairly high in points are going to take two of those spots automatically. And that is the voice of Phil Parsons. I didn't get to properly introduce you, but uh, welcome, Phil. Thank and uh, certainly looking forward to qualifying and setting the lineup for tonight's race as we come back to Nashville Super Speedway for the first time since 2011. 31-37 for Dawson Cram. That's about a half a second slower than what he had practiced. He ran a 30-88 in practice, so certainly the heat of the day, the track more than likely has sl slowed down some. Xfinity cars just coming off the racetrack for an hour or about a 50-minute practice. Yeah, we had a 50-minute practice this morning, uh, 11 o'clock local, 12 noon Eastern. And, um, and then just as you mentioned, the Xfinity Series just completed their practice session. It's 90, or low 90s, 91 degrees, feels like 95 Plenty if you really want to get technical. But uh, it is indeed. And that's about 10 degrees warmer than it was uh, during practice. Uh, earlier today as you take a look at the 12 of Tate Fogelman season best 19th 3071 was the best lap Tate was able to grab and practice we'll see how uh, that compares to what he can do here qualifying and you see sim seats on board with the uh, Young's Motorsports Chevy Silverado new sponsorship agreement with 
Sim Seats and Young's Motorsports, and always good to see new companies on board the trucks. 3092 for Tate. That's only a couple tenths of a second slower than what he had practiced, so he did not lose as much as Dawson Cram did on his qualifying effort. You know, Chandler Smith was talking and said how this feels like a big short track. Michael Waltrip, our buddy Michael Waltrip, texted me, said this racetrack drives like the biggest short track you've ever seen. It does drive like a short track, but it's pretty darn fast when you're probably running speeds upwards of 160 miles an hour down the straightaways. Yeah, I've had some drivers say the speed feels like a mile and a half, but you drive it like a short track, which is, uh, I think, an interesting combination. Yeah, you use brakes. You know, a lot of these trucks with the big cabs usually don't have to use brakes. On any of the mile and a half, certainly we don't use any brakes, but... Uh, they said they were using brakes both ends of the racetrack trying to get in these corners. Brett Holmes, the former ARCA Series champion, taking his qualifying time and third out of the three that have gone so far. Jamie Little. Well, not a lot of drivers have been to this track and raced before Parker Kligerman, one of those, a couple of stars. How has this place changed and what's it like to come back 10 years later? I don't remember a thing, actually. No, I, I, I remembered a couple little things that I felt out there, but most exciting thing here is we got Fast on this truck, as you can tell, Fast Checkout. Go check them out at Fast.co. They're making the internet more seamless place. One-click check-in, one-click check-out, so you can buy things faster on the internet. I want to make our truck as fast as what they're doing, we're just not quite there in practice, so hopefully in qualifying we've made the right changes. This Henderson Motorsports team led by Chris Carrier does a great job, and we go out there and have some speed for tonight, which would be nice. One lap to get it done, Parker. Jamie? Jamie, we said Todd Gilliland not going to make it out for qualifying. You were encouraged after practice this morning. What impact will this have now on your strategy for the race? Yeah, I mean, it just makes me that, more, more, that much more aggressive. Um, you know, coming from the back at a place that's notorious for being hard to pass at is going to be tough. But um, I just I feel super confident in my team right now still. You know, I got my best guys on it right now fixing it. And uh, I feel like probably the best pit crew in the, in the truck series at, at times. So just still really excited for the race tonight. Our truck was still really good in practice. We were top of the board for, for a long time there. Uh, didn't have a great mock run, but... I mean, we're, we're missing qualifying now anyway. So uh, coming from back, it's just going to be a lot of fun. And um, thank you so much, Crosley Brands. I um, you know, wish we didn't have to do this for Room Motorsports. Thank you for all your hard work. And, um, you know, like I said, it's going to be more fun coming from the back and passing a bunch of trucks. We'll see what they can come up with, guys. So you see Josh Berry in the 25 take his qualifying run. We also saw Clay Greenfield and Corey Roper. Greenfield in the 68. Roper was the 04. Here's Josh Berry making his third truck start, looking to make his third truck start, and he is one of two trucks out of the Rackley War stable this weekend. The other is William Byron. We could hear how long he was out of the throttle down there getting in turn three as he brings it back to the start finish line. Great top 10 effort last time out with this truck for Josh Berry, and he goes to the top of the board. Well, the 30 40. Come out, come around, take the green, and you get one lap to lay it down. And you see some of the rubber down on the uh, track. They've put down a, not the normal what we call traction compound, but a resin um, that provides some stickiness. And I know you spoke with Stuart Friesen about him saying he was pleasantly surprised that the track was grippier than what he anticipated. Yeah, initially on the racetrack, trucks obviously the first uh series out on the racetrack and he said it had a lot more grip than he thought and I think essentially that resin is a bonding agent to try to get yep. the rubber to adhere to the racetrack and as you can see that the, the racetrack has remained black throughout our practice session earlier plus the Xfinity practice session so a lot of rubber down there. Got a handful of drivers doing double duty this weekend in uh, either the Xfinity series or the Cup series and Jamie Littles with one. Ross Chastain's always one of the busiest guys out here in the field, but you as a team, Nice Motorsports, you guys struggled a little bit in practice. Where were you lacking? What do you need to qualify well here? Uh, front turn. <laughs> we are tight, very tight. So, yes, um, that's all That's all we need. We just need to turn. And just to wheel it, right? That's right. Well, I've got my buddy Walter on the side of the truck. Uh, Circle B Diecast asked what we should name the side of the truck, the little watermelon guy, and it's, it's Walter Melon. I mean, it's... Walter Mellon. That's what it is. I think we got dad jokes from Ross Chastain here. <laughs> As we watch William Byron finish up his qualifying run, and he is fastest at a 30-35, bettering his teammate Josh Berry. 
So you've got uh, Chevrolets in the top five positions with Byron, Barry, Purdy, Fogelman, and Cram. Yeah, the racetrack has lost a lot of speed from our practice session. William ran a 29.68 in practice, and that lap of 30.35, that's seven-tenths of a second slower than what they had run in practice on a mock qualifying run. So uh, a lot of lot of speed lost in the heat of the day. Talked about double-duty drivers. Here's one, Ryan Priest, and he's also out of that uh, DGR garage along with uh, Tanner Gray. It's interesting, Tanner Gray in the 15 and and uh, Todd Gilliland in the 38. And even though Gilliland uh, technically is a front row motorsports truck, they're all uh, come out of the same garage there at DGR. And uh, those two got uh, their hands slapped by NASCAR and said, you got to alter the front end. But Ryan Priest did not. And so <laughs> do we give credit to Chad Johnson, the crew chief or or well, what? For well, that? Sure, we will. Absolutely. Here's the 11 of Spencer Davis. Remember, there was a couple magic numbers here, Vince. Obviously, a lot of these drivers are racing for the pole, but 31 is the number that will be locked in on speed. So a lot of these teams that can't really rely on point position, owner point position, knows that the, know that they have to make that top 31. That is critical to some of these teams that are attempting to make this race. This probably being one of them, Spencer Davis. Spencer Davis looking to make his fifth start of the season. Season best 16th at Richmond. Just getting underway, qualifying for the Camping World Truck Series at Nashville Speedway. Don't go away, got a lot left. Hey, check it out tomorrow. It's the Spring League Mega Bowl, and it is on Fox. The linemen taking on the Jousters, battling for the championship crown. Action begins tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern, noon Pacific, on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Coming to you from Houston, the Mega Bowl. Here's the 24 truck, and this is Jack Wood. Looking to make his third start. Ran at Coda and also at Charlotte. 15th at Charlotte. GMS announced that uh, mod standout Doug Kobe's going to run the 24 truck at Bristol later this summer. That'll be fun. Multi-time national modified tour champion. And big news to GMS announcing they're going to go cup racing in 2022. In fact, it's kind of been a big news day because College Racing announced they're going to have a couple of full-time cup cars next year. Uh, Alex Bowman, two-year contract extension with Hendrick. Congratulations to Alex. Yeah, you wouldn't think the middle of June would be a big news time, but it certainly is. Yeah, the silly season has begun as Jack Wood has taken it to the top. Well done, young man. Yeah, Jack was solid in that practice session, as you mentioned. Vince, 15th. He will be in this truck for the majority of the races for the remainder of the year. Track record, by the way, at a 29-60, 29-601. That was set back in 2006 by Eric Darnell. Oh, oh man, Keith McGee on board. I thought we had a shot at that track record. We were only a few hundredths of a second off the track record in practice. But even with the heat of the day and the rubber put down, you see all this black as mm. Keith really has his hands full here. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to get quite to uh, to that track record speed. Military Finance, the onboard sponsor here. Of course, Keith, an Air Force veteran. Military Finance Community Built Project to aid military veterans and charities. And Keith's 32-72 and uh, a heart stopper on a couple of occasions. Yeah, we were riding along with him when this happened. Whoa. And he did a nice job of corralling that truck and keeping it off the safer barrier. Yeah, they're lucky that one's not on the hook. Good looking truck. Give him credit for that for sure. As you look at the 34 of Lawless Allen, 21 years old from Van Nuys, California. Good to make his third start of the season. Saw that truck bouncing a little bit, turn four. There's some bumps around this racetrack. All concrete racetracks have some bumps, but uh, as you can see again, as it gets down in turn number one, seventh quickest for Lawless Allen. Pretty good run at a 30.996. Check in with Jamie Howe. Josh Berry finds himself fourth right now in the run order. You say it's hard to tell how good that's going to be by the end of this, but based off of this morning to qualifying, how happy are you with the changes you guys have made? 
Yeah, I think we've been all right. Um, we unloaded really good. Uh, these guys at Rackley Ward did a really good job. I'm just trying to keep up with the racetrack. Obviously, it's rubbering up. I just got out of the Xfinity practice, and it, it changed a good bit during that. It took a lot of rubber. So we're uh, we're still learning. I think everybody here is um, you know, qualifying. Our mock one for us wasn't that great, but Williams was really good. Now we're kind of about the same, so I'm not really sure where we're going to stack up. But all in all, it's uh, excited to be carrying the Rackley Roofing Colors tonight here in the in uh, the Rackley Roofing 200. So it should be a good night. Looking forward to having some fun. Looking forward to all the fun, Jimmy Little. Stuart Friesen uh, got a little too excited earlier, gave us the one spin of the day, kissed it with the right rear. Did you guys get it fixed up, and did you end up getting the truck where you needed it? Yeah, for sure. Uh, we fired off a little bit tight there and uh, just worked to get it freed up. Made a bunch of good changes and got a good balance. Made a long run at the end of practice uh, rather than doing a mock run. So uh, I'm confident our Helmar, Helmar Tundra is, uh, has been fast the last couple of weeks. Uh, haven't got the finishes, uh, you know, we wanted. So I made a mistake last week in Texas, messed it up for everybody, but um, they brought us another good one. So we'll try our best and, um, you know, we're qualifying again, so this is pretty cool. And uh, hopefully we can start, you know, somewhere close to the front. Good luck. So Parker Kligerman and uh, Ty Majeski in their qualifying efforts. And they'll, at least for the time being, slot into the fifth and sixth positions as you look at the 14 now of Trey Hutchins. We saw that big wreck at Charlotte a couple of races ago. Johnny Sauter was yep. involved, and Trey was actually the truck that had trouble and was sitting against the outside wall when Johnny came off turn four and did not know he was there. Great to see Trey back in the field here, attempting to qualify. Remember, we talked about a couple of important numbers. 31, you need to be in the top 31. With 42 trucks attempting to qualify, that means you have to beat 11. Now, we know that the 15 and the 38 are not going to qualify, so you basically have to beat nine trucks that are qualifying in this session. So that's the magic number these teams are looking at. They have to beat nine of these trucks that are qualifying today. So if you're in the top nine right now, you're feeling good about that? Yes, yes. As you know, there's been 16 trucks, right? So right now, Trey Hutchins is 10th. That means he's beat six trucks so far. He needs to be three more trucks to assure himself a spot in the field. Here's Danny Bone, the 32-year-old from Freehold, New Jersey. Did not run most recent race at Texas. In fact, he's missed a couple, but uh, has been solid in the others. The season best 17th on a couple of occasions. And you see there the tracker on the bottom right-hand portion of the screen. That's in relation to the fastest speed, currently owned by Jack Wood. Lost a little bit of ground there in one and two. He went in the corner about a tenth and a half off pace from the pole. And you can see where he is now, almost a second off. And as Bone finishes his lap, we'll go downstairs to Jamie Howe. Brian Priest making his first truck series start this weekend, getting some good track time before the cup race later this weekend. You're second on the timesheets right now. What have you been able to learn about Nashville Super Speedway? It's definitely different from a lot of places I've been, and trucks are a lot different to drive for sure. But uh, all the pizza and donuts that I've had this week has sure helped out. You know, thanks to Hunt Brothers Pizza and everybody for making this happen and, happen and uh, just having a lot of fun. You know, uh, it's, it's a great, great time racing with these guys at David Gill and Racing. And, and uh, we'll see if we can have some good track position at the beginning and keep it up there and see what we can do. I love the confidence he has. Jamie Little. Chandler Smith was the fastest man this morning. I saw you talking to your crew chief. What kind of information are you guys getting now that so many trucks have gone before you? Yeah, the track definitely looks like it slowed down a little bit. Um, kind of like I was asking him what the track temperature was out right now compared to what it was when we made our mock run earlier. is uh, really good information for a driver like myself to know, just knowing how much I pushed it in the mock run and um, how much slipperier and greasier it's going to be now with the track warming up and all. So uh, just running through those things and trying to get the best is all I can do. It's been a good day so far for the 18. Yeah, we'll see if he can continue that on. And uh, his qualifying opportunity rolls around as you watch Spencer Boyd on track. Another one of those trucks out of the Young's Motorsports camp. Saw Ross Chastain make his qualifying attempt. 30.924 for him. He's ninth quickest right now of, of the 18 trucks that have put a time in. Remember, 42 on the entry list. Uh, Jinjo Cobb, actually 43. Jinjo Cobb withdrew, but uh, 42 on the current 
entry list and 36 will make the show as you see Spencer Boyd's time and position down in the 18th slot out of the 19 that have run so far. And here's Josh Rayom. Teammate to Lawless Allen. Lawless right now is 10th quickest. That means with 19 trucks already qualified, that means Lawless Allen is locked in the field in the top 31. That is assuming the, the two DGR trucks don't make an attempt to qualify. Josh looking to make his second start of the season. And is the slowest of the 20 to go so far. We're about halfway through the qualifying list. Still plenty to go, including those two guys. The three-time champ on the left and last year's champ, Sheldon Creed. Back at Nashville Super Speedway on a steamy day. Temperature 92 degrees. Sunshine and a little bit of a breeze, though, just to keep it from being miserable. We're actually a lot better than the sweatiness we experienced last week at Texas, that's for sure. The heat and humidity. And always glad to be back at the racetrack, especially somewhere we haven't been in a while. And it's been since 2011, since... Nashville Super Speedways hosted NASCAR in the Camping World Truck Series back and qualifying for tonight's race tonight that you'll see on FS1. As you see Timmy Hill in the 56 truck, we've gone about halfway through the qualifying list. Timmy really does a nice job along with his brother Tyler in this family-owned operation. A couple top tens this year for Timmy. You don't think Timmy spent any time I racing this racetrack, do you? Uh, <laughs> well, it just came online, right? I racing yeah. in Nashville Super Speedway just uh, became available, so I'm sure many drivers spent uh, multiple hours getting prepared. Not much to go on, huh? That's for sure. Timmy's so good at I racing, one of the best we have. We've got a handful of drivers we mentioned have not raced here since uh, 2011 as Hill slots into the 10th spot. There are a handful of drivers that have made a start or two. Matt Crafton has made the most, Johnny Sauter the second most, but uh, I don't know, Phil. I mean, you would know better than I, but even with some experience here, 10 years goes by. I mean, it's still almost got to feel like something new, I would think, or not? I would think it's uh, like, like brand new. I mean, maybe you, like Parker Kligerman was saying, maybe you remember a couple of the bumps or something like that. But and the, the setups on these trucks have changed dramatically over the past 10 years. So, you know, what you had 10 years ago isn't anything like what these trucks are set up like now. So I, I, don't, I don't think it... Uh, maybe initially the first time on the racetrack, but these guys adapt pr pretty quick, and I'm, I don't think there's a huge advantage to being here uh, a number of times over 10 years ago. Just watching uh, J.J. Yaley finish up his qualifying effort and slot into the 16th position. Fastest is Jack Wood. He's with Jamie Howe. And Jack is only in his third NASCAR Truck Series race weekend. But after nine trucks have gone behind you, you're still sitting at the top of the board. What have you been able to figure out this weekend? Yeah, it's just been a lot of prep work. Um, you know, working with everybody at Driver's Edge over at Chevy. Um, just putting in a lot of time to get ready for these races. But, you know, third truck race so far. And, you know, these guys are it's a great group of guys to work with. And, you know, extremely thankful for everybody at GMS and uh, Chevrolet to give us this chance. But, you know, there's still a lot more trucks to go and uh, you know just happy with the speed but should be a good weekend for us certainly encouraging we'll see a lot more of him this season Jamie Little yeah and John Hunter Nemechek fresh off his fourth win of the season but we're at a brand new place I saw you talking to your teammates what kind of information are you guys discussing uh, we did do a mock run earlier so kind of relying on Chandler Smith I don't know if that's good or bad or what the situation is but um, he was able to do one earlier was fastest in practice so uh, I think we made the right adjustments to our mobile one Toyota Tundra uh, this is an awesome racetrack my first time here so a lot of learning for me but hopefully we can go out and grab this pole all right the veteran leaning on the youngster this time around it's a pretty potent combination I would say as you watch Ben Rhodes finish up his qualifying run that tracker there on the bottom right again in relation to the pole speed so Rhodes in the, the seventh position his teammate Grant Infinger who qualified just prior to Ben Infinger second quickest the Thor Sport trucks have looked pretty good today in uh, practice and they've both two of the four that have gone have uh, certainly put up good qualifying speed still have uh, Johnny Sauter and Matt Crafton yet to go as we see 
Carson Hosovar, the 18-year-old from Michigan, currently leading the Rookie of the Year standings and in playoff position. How impressive is he been? He, 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 he never ran any super speedway races before because he wasn't old enough. He didn't turn 18 till January. He's going to use the whole oh, racetrack. Man, he though, used it all there, four, he? Still going to be a pretty decent lap. Fifth quickest for Carson Hosovar. I think there's probably some folks at the uh, niece, the, <laughs> the body niece shop, the body shop, <laughs> <laughs> the body shop thought they were going to have a little work to do on that one. Oh, Hosevar, well done. This is a track position track. It has been uh, ever in all the forms of racing that have raced here. Track position at premium. In fact, the pole winner, uh, the last four races here have been won from the pole. So it's not a guarantee, but you certainly want to start up toward the front, if at all possible. The, the only driver in practice that really had any issue at all from our 50-minute session this morning was the pilot of this truck, and that's uh, Stuart Friesen. We heard him visit with Jamie earlier, a little right rear damage. But uh, they've got that smoothed out, it looked like, as Friesen slots into the number nine position. Yeah, it looks like he lost a little bit of time over in turn one and two, but got a little bit of that back as we take a look at Matt Kraft and Matt was in the top 10 in practice and we talk about not being here in 10 years and we started racing here in 2001 well Matt Crafton has run every truck race the only driver to run every truck race that we've ever run here at Nashville that's what happens when you're a 45 year old veteran <laughs> I don't want to say you're old because you can still get it with the best of them as uh, you see him just a little bit off pole speed and uh, Jack Wood's time looking better and better at a 30-12 and Crafton puts up a 30-55. Eighth quickest. Assuming that, uh, that the two Fords of DGR do not attempt to qualify, you can see left side of your screen our scoring pylon. Spencer Davis in the 18th spot has beat nine trucks, so he is locked in the field. Everybody from Spencer Davis up is locked in the field as of now on time. Here's Austin Hill, the JBL Tundra. Different colors for Austin. Normally he's got a lot of blue on his truck, but with JBL's colors being orange and black, those Austin Hill fans are probably enjoying a new scheme. Amazing consistency from Austin Hill. Hasn't got to victory lane yet this year. And there's no doubt that it's coming soon as he slots in second. Great lap for Austin Hill, but oh, missed uh, by just three hundredths. Yeah, but his consistency has been outstanding yeah. this year. Feel like he's due, and they have they've had the speed. Uh, talking to Scott Zipadelli, and they say they've had the speed to win, but either they've made a mistake or caught a bad break, a number of things. They just haven't been able to get it all put together on the right night to take it to victory lane. As you watch Sheldon Creed. Last year's series champion. He's had a couple of tough outings back to back with accidents and bad finishes. So they'd like to get it turned around here at uh, Nashville. He looked a lot to me like oh, Stewart. Yeah, handful man. there. He was in the green as he got into turn number one. Lost a lot of ground there from center. Yeah, he said it's, it's loose. It's going to be bad there. He is 16th quickest. He had a good lap going till he got the center of one and two. Then had to chase it up the hill. Lost a little ground. Let's take a look, Vince, back at what happened at one and two. Well, and then in four, he really had to saw those hands. See that wiggle yes, there? Moves, indeed. Was way up the racetrack. Then he had a similar situation down at the other end in turns three and four. Mm. Here's Chandler Smith. We heard John Hunter Nemechek say they were leaning on Chandler for his qualifying effort. So you got to believe that John Hunter's hoping that Chandler Smith puts up a good number here, knowing that that's what they've got in their truck. Good lap going, not quite pole speed, but within a tenth of a second yes. of pole speed. Good lap for Chandler Smith, though, slots in fourth. Chandler Smith comes into this race on the playoff bubble. He needs a good one. Haley Deegan's qualifying run coming up when we return. Stay with us. Hey, tomorrow on FS1, catch the Angels and the Tigers. Angels have been hot, winners seven of the last ten. It's tomorrow, 10 o'clock Eastern on FS1 and the Fox Sports app, the Tigers and the Angels. How are your Tigers doing this season, Pretty Phil? good. Pretty good. We're rebuilding. Yeah. You grew up in Detroit. Totally. Tigers love the Tigers. Player. Absolutely love the Tigers. Don't count them out here. You love them whether they're good or bad? Yes, or, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 
That's a real fan. Yeah. I love them better when, when they're when, good. But, yeah. <laughs> like most fans, yeah. Though, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Back for qualifying as it continues here at Nashville Super Speedway. Getting the lineup set for tonight's race and uh, watching Derek Krause on track in that 19 truck. Needs a strong run to continue that playoff push. Well, he missed the playoffs last year by 13 points, and he's 42 points outside the playoff cut line. Look at that tracker. This race today, but he is hauling the mail right Great now. Great lap going, Vince. Two tenths better than the pole lap at this point, and he's going to do it. Wow. How about that? Derek Kraus at a 29.83. What a lap. Man. First and only driver under the 30-second mark. As you mentioned, almost three tenths of a second better than the 24 truck. Now here's Austin Wayne Self and another driver that's having a career year in regards to where he sits in the playoff standings. He's just nine points below the cut line, threatening to make that playoff 10. And boy, what an accomplishment that would be for this small team. Another one of those young drivers with a lot of consistency. Had a great top 10 finish at Darlington earlier this year. Also at Bristol on the dirt. Going to slide into the 21st spot here in qualify. Everybody probably shaking their head at what Derek Krause has just done. All those that have qualified already just looking up at that board and seeing 29.83. Really? Wow. Here's Drew Dollar in the 51, one of the three Kyle Busch Motorsports trucks. And uh, Drew coming off a couple of tough finishes, 20th at Charlotte in an accident, and 33rd at Texas. Tracking about four tenths of a second off our pole of Derek Krause. Lost a little bit of ground getting down in turn number three. So Drew Dollar at a 30.77. That will be 15th. Ty Majeski sits 10th on the board. He's with Jamie Howe. And he was 19th in practice this morning. Ty, for you, where is it better? Where can you still improve before the race? Yeah, I think, uh, I think we have a pretty good truck. Um, just can't thank all the guys at Thor Sport and, and Duke and Ronda Thor for giving me this opportunity. Um, the track was slick. The, it definitely took a balance swing from what we experienced in practice. Uh, you saw a lot of guys uh, slipping and sliding around there and qualifying. So uh, I know Bud will get it tuned up tonight. And uh, hopefully we can uh, get the SimCraft to a tundra up front tonight. Let's see. A great opportunity for Ty at Thor Sport as he watches his teammate Johnny Sauter finish up his qualifying lap at Sauter's seventh quickest at a 30 28. Yeah, good run for Johnny. Yeah. Johnny fell below the cut line after the race at Texas last week, so needs to have a good outing here with only four to go counting tonight. The 0 2 is Chris Wright. Rookie in the series, opened up with a season best 12th at Daytona. Bouncing back and forth, he's run a couple of Xfinity races. Hasn't run all the truck series events. He's missed four as a couple of other drivers have stepped into that truck on occasion. Out of the Young's Motorsports Group. Twenty fifth for Chris Wright, thirty one twenty three. That is fast enough to bump him in to the field. And here's the four of John Hunter Nemechek. And I don't think John Hunter liked what happened over in turn three on his get up to speed lap. He has not taken the green flag yet, so he technically can can turn back around, go all the way back around to just to the entrance the exit of pit road and start over again. And I think that's essentially what he's going to do. Uh, he has that right to do that. He has not taken the green flag yet. This is him on his get up to speed lap getting down in number in turn three. You can see him chasing and chasing way up the had to get out of the throttle there. So he realized hey this is not going to be a good lap and he quick thinking aborted that lap got stopped before the start finish line and if you 
do that before crossing the start finish line and getting the green you can turn around and go all the way back and do your lap again yeah once once you take the green flag though it would have been yep. it would have been over he could have stopped it it had been what it was but the fact that he got stopped before the start finish line he's certainly within his rights to do what he's doing right here so he'll go all the way back as far back as possible to uh, come back and turn it around and it doesn't matter how long it takes you to do your warm-up lap but he'll get this thing turned around and head back the other direction. I'm sure some of those folks on the back stretch there were thinking, what's going on <laughs> he's here? Going he's going the wrong he way. He's going the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, but NASCAR <laughs> will not allow him to make any adjustments. That would just be a situation where he will have to make the adjustments inside the cockpit on how he drives this truck. Yeah, well, and certainly being a little bit more aware of uh, the challenges of turns uh, three and four. So let's see if uh, this maneuver can pay off for John Hunter as he gets back on the gas down the back stretch, headed into turn three. And remember, this is right about where he found that uh, he had a handful right in this section here. I think more than likely he'll just wait to get out of the throttle just that extra split second, let that truck take a little bit of a set. That truck looked a lot better that time, didn't it, Vince? It did indeed. So now he's on his qualifying lap, and you see on the bottom right, that's in comparison to the pole speed. And Derek Krause, Krause ran a 29.83, the only one who's under the 30-second mark so far in this qualifying session. You could see that truck could, could, would not stay on the bottom for John Hunter. That's why he lost a little bit of time down there in one and two. It's not going to be the lap he's looking for, but it's going to be a lot better lap than if he would have went ahead and done it the first time around. So John Hunter will slot into the 13th position and knowing John Hunter and uh, crew chief Eric Phillips and that team they're going to be disappointed with that work to do but uh, plenty of laps to run tonight before that checkered flag will fall as you watch Zane Smith in the 21 and he is teammate to Jack Wood who was on the provisional pole for a while and currently sits in the second position so you know that those GMS trucks have speed let's see what Zane can do with it about two tenths off as he tracks currently and that's to the speed of Derek Kraus who's on top of the board eighth for Zane I tell you what you're gonna have to put together one heck of a lap to beat that Derek Kraus you lap. really are that, that thing was, was incredible Keep waiting for Zane Smith to uh, get on a roll and reel off a few top fives in a row and maybe get that first win of the season after winning a couple of times last year. Hey, Here's Ryan Truex in the 40. Remember the last year, our runner-up finisher in the points, yep. Zane Smith. Watch the right side of your screen. That's Haley Deegan as she launches off a of pit road, getting up through the gears. You see she's in third gear now, drops it back in high gear. Truex 18. You can hear Haley playing with that throttle a little bit. You heard the drivers talk about this track losing a lot of grip from the practice session. Boy, that truck right on the bottom of the racetrack. Seen some have a handful down here in three and four. Let's see how she gets through here. It's going to be a pretty solid lap. She's going to be about six tenths off the pole. Should be somewhere around the top 12 or so. 13th. Yeah, good effort for Haley Deegan. Continuing to progress. Had a good run at Texas last weekend before some issues on pit road relegated her to a 24th place finish. And here's the 26 of Tyler Ankrum trying to rally back into playoff contention. He's 21 points outside the cut line, but he has made up some big deficit in the last uh, two to three races. Third, 16th, and eighth in the last three. Yeah, we wrote him off earlier this year. He was 60-some points. He was like 17th or 18th. 
on the playoff grid, and he piled up some great some great effort. Good good qualifying effort too for Tyler Ankrum, seventh quickest. As Derek Kraus on the left side of your screen looks on and said, "Okay, we dodged another one." And that'll do it because Todd Gilliland and Tanner Gray are not going to make qualifying efforts. Jinjo Cobb has withdrawn, and Derek Kraus has just scored his first career pole. Yeah. Well done, young man. 19 years old from Stratford, Wisconsin. The last four racers have won from the pole here at Nashville. He's hoping that trend remains. Qualifying is complete. Derek Kraus will start from the pole and a little bit of a news item regarding the four of John Hunter Nemechek, which we'll get to in a moment. But how about this front row, Phil, with a couple of youngsters and Derek Kraus and Jack Wood. I mean, they look like those are their grade school photos <laughs> up there. I think it's awesome. What uh, Again, we talked about the beginning of the day how this was a great equalizer the fact that no one really had an advantage being here because we hadn't been here in 10 years and look who we have on the front row here great and, job yep jamie little with the poll winner and how about that Derek kraus getting his first career poll here in the truck series based off practice were you as surprised by that fast lap as most of us were i mean we had a really good car in practice or truck i felt like in practice and uh it rotated the center really well and then in qualifying i was able to stay on the gas a lot and uh, make sure this throw good Toyota Tundra was uh, really fast and ended up on the pole, so that's really good. Congratulations, and look at this, you guys. He was going so fast, he didn't even feel this. Hit something in the track and broke it right here, fiberglass right here on the body, so they'll have to fix that up before the start of this race. So job well done overall. Jamie. Well, Jamie, we said that there was quick thinking for John Hunter Nemechek. We saw him turn around. He wasn't happy with his warm-up lap before the green flag, but that time has now been disallowed. What were you told by NASCAR? Uh, that I guess I was supposed to come down pit road instead of turning around. Uh, we haven't qualified and I don't know how long, so uh, I guess I'm not up to date on the procedures. Um, but overall, a uh, solid day so far for our mobile one Toyota Tundra. Um, starting in the back, it's just got to make it more interesting. Uh, I'm sure that we'll be up at the front trying to uh, uh, win this thing by the end. But uh, overall, just happy with all my guys. and. You can't change the outcome. Just can uh, move forward and go get another checkered flag. We're going to have some fast trucks coming through the field tonight, Vince. Well, that's going to be fun to watch. John Hunter Nemechek, uh, certainly unfortunate for him and his team, but uh, it's going to be to our benefit as viewers. Yeah, so we're going to see uh, one of the best have to come from the rear. Coming back to Nashville. Welcome back to Nashville Super Speedway. Rackley Roofing 200 qualifying in the books. And Derek Kraus is your pole winner. McAnally Hogelman Racing. First career pole for the 19-year-old Kraus. And he hopes the trend continues at the last four Nashville races from this track. We're one from the pole. And it's been a while. i got to go all the way back to 19 or 1911. <laughs> 2011. <laughs> First but, uh, Indy 500, right? 1911. Ray yeah. Haroon, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, 2011, the last time we were here. So if you go back to those last four races, they've all been won from the pole. And Kraus is hoping that's the case tonight. We'll have NASCAR race day, 7 o'clock Eastern from our Charlotte studios. And then we'll have the racing from Nashville Super Speedway and looking forward to it. It's going to be a beautiful evening. It's been a great day. Hot uh, temperature in the low 90s, but going to cool off a little bit for tonight. And the Rackley Roofing 200 at 8 o'clock tonight. What do you expect, Phil? We talked about this track being an equalizer uh, when we started practice this morning at noon, and, and I think we've seen that already today. I think without a doubt, and we're going to have such good trucks coming from the back. That was one of them right there, Todd Gill, and he'll be coming from the back. How about John Hunter Nemechek coming from the back? Ross Chastain outside the top 20. It's going to be so much fun to watch. Sheldon Creed outside yep. the top 20. It's going to be fun. Join us for race day on FS1, 7 o'clock Eastern, and then racing with the Rackley Roofing 200 at 8 p.m. Eastern on FS1. Thanks for being with us from Nashville.